Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're gonna be talking about how to spin a bucket around on an excavator and dig with it in the reverse position. Uh, so first of all, I do wanna say, this is not something that you're going to use on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is a really handy tool to have in your tool belt. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is this doesn't work with every excavator. You have to have a specific type of coupler called a pin grabber coupler, and here's why. So I've got my bucket detached, and you can see that we've got our two bucket pins here, the key to a pin grabber coupler is the way that it works. You have a slot up here that the bucket actually, or I'm sorry, the coupler actually latches onto the front pin and just loosely holds it. I mean, it's a tight fit, but you can see that nothing clamps on this side. It's just suspending the bucket. And then this part here holds this pin, and then you have a mechanism here that actually slides down and closes this gap. And so it actually holds this pin, which prevents this pin from sliding forward and falling out. The reason you have to use a pin grabber style coupler is because of this right here. These two pins are both the same diameter and the same length, which means that from a coupler configuration, it doesn't care which pin goes in the front and which goes in the rear. Um, a lot of your other couplers, like a wedge style or like the Kubota style couplers, Anytime there's any variance on either the pin, the width of the pin, or there's a, a difference in the diameter of the pin, you can't switch them around because it's no longer tight, it no longer fits together, and like in the instance of a wedge coupler, you can't even couple the bucket. Uh, it's physically not possible to get the rear pin where it couples to the machine. So all that being said, this is not something you can do with just any machine. You do have to have a specific coupler type to do this. So I did wanna show you this uh, before we get rolling so that you understand why you can only do this with certain machines. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go jump in the machine. I'm gonna show you the process of how to spin the bucket around and then I'll show you some techniques um, of digging, although we're not actually gonna get in the dirt unfortunately today just because this is a frozen farmer's field that we don't wanna tear up, but we can at least do some air digging examples and I can kinda show you how you would use this in the rear bucket configuration. So that being said, let's go jump in the machine. I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so here we are in the machine, and the first step that we're gonna do is we're actually going to lift our bucket up. We're gonna curl it all the way into the machine so that we can release the coupler. So I'm gonna go ahead and rev the machine up, pull the bucket in here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and release my coupler. You're gonna hear it start buzzing, and that buzzing is the safety that's telling me my coupler is open. So I'm gonna push my hydraulics over relief, which is actually gonna transfer that fluid to the coupler. And then we're gonna uncurl and we're gonna set our bucket down nice and gentle. And so now what we need to do, and this is a great way that we can see our coupler, I'm gonna cycle this coupler. This is how a pin grabber works. I'm gonna put it in the lock position. Now notice the bucket mechanism or the coupler mechanism doesn't actually move until I push my hydraulics over relief. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to curl and you can see it start to move and it's gonna grab that rear pin. So that is in the locked position. Now I'm gonna cycle it to the unlocked position. So that is how a pin grabber actually works and how it grabs onto the bucket. And that's, that's like I was saying outside, that's the only reason you can flip the bucket around with pin grabbers is because the pins are the same size, they're the same diameter, and this thing grabs onto it no matter what configuration, it doesn't matter to the coupler. So now that we've got our bucket off, I'm gonna flip my coupler back over to the unlock position, so it's gonna buzz. What we're gonna do is we're gonna very gently spin our bucket around, and here I'm gonna emphasize, do it gently. You don't need to pound the f out of your machine to get the bucket spun around. You're gonna break the coupler, you have a chance of damaging the pins, all of this needs to be done very gently. You can do it in a, in a very efficient way without having to just wail on your bucket. So my process here is we're gonna unlock, put the coupler in the unlock position, we're gonna spin our bucket around and we're actually going to grab it in a reverse position and then we're gonna bring it into us tight and recouple it. So here we go.
And again, the key here is nice and gentle. And you want to get it somewhat square to the machine, <clears throat> which it was until I just bonked it. Right about there. And now we're going to grab our rear pin. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my coupler in the lock position. We're going to bring it in tight here. And you can see that. I don't know if you can on the screen. Let me tap. Yeah, you should have been able to see that coupler uh, lock move. And now we are locked in. And so now we have our bucket. And sorry about that. I forget this machine has a coupler and I can't uncurl all the way. Um, so now this machine is set up in the reverse bucket configuration. Now let's talk about why you would want to use this. So let's say we had a set of utilities that we were trying to undermine to get under so that we could run a water line to a house or whatever it is. What I would do is I would actually flip my bucket into the straight normal standard digging configuration and I would dig down beside the utilities and then what I would do is I would move my machine around perpendicular to them and I would start to undermine. So imagine for a second that my bucket was flipped around normal and we're gonna pretend that this little, this little roadway here that you can see in the ice and snow, that's where our utilities are. So pretend my, my bucket is flipped around normal. I would dig down beside those utilities, right up against them in a trench about like this. And I'm not digging because this is my buddy's field and I'm not gonna tear it all up. But you can see now, we would excavate that down probably about, I don't know, 10 feet or so, six feet, enough that we knew we were under the utilities. Then what I would do, and I have a little D5 behind me here, so I'm not gonna get perfectly lined up on this because I don't wanna smack his machine. So pretend that our, our trench was a little more out in front of me. Now what I can do is I can actually start to undermine the utilities by putting my bucket down in the trench and I can start digging this way in a front cover, in a front shovel configuration. So I would dump my spoils, put it back in the hole, go back down in the trench, dig a little more. And so you can see how we can actually get up under those utilities while still being able to see what we're doing. That's the most common use of flipping the bucket around backwards. Uh, another use that uh, I've seen a lot of guys use is let's say we were doing pipe work in a trench where we could only access it from this side and you wanted to sprinkle material. So we would grab some material out of our stockpile here. We would bring it back over the hole and then as our guys needed it, you know, if there was a building or a wall or a structure of some sort that we couldn't get our bucket way out here over the trench, we can still dump our material in the hole from this side with the front bucket configuration without going over to the other side of the trench. So those are the two most common times uh, I've seen or have used a, a backwards bucket configuration. So it is a very, very useful tool to have in your tool belt, uh, but at the same time, it's not like you're gonna use this every day and it's gonna be something that's just, okay, now that I know how to do this, we're gonna do it all the time. There's only a few circumstances that really warrant you flipping the bucket around. But that being said, that's why pin grabbing couplers are so handy is because it allows you to do this. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the bucket back around the normal way. So I'm gonna go ahead and curl all the way in. And you should be able to see the coupler there. We're gonna put it in the unlock position, hold them over relief. There we go, she's unlocked. We're gonna uncurl. And in this configuration, you can see that bucket drops out of there because of the fact that the pins are at a different angle. 
So we're gonna very gently and lovingly nudge our bucket back around. Too far, too far. Oh, just missed it. We're gonna grab our top pin, curl into it, and then it will start to lift the bucket. And then we're gonna put it back in the lock position. We're gonna hold over relief so that it locks down. And always, always, always check the coupler before you swing over anyone in the hole or you do anything where you're gonna be around people. Always check the coupler by uncurling it. It's not a bad idea to actually take it and put some down pressure on it. Always make sure that coupler engages. Uh, that is one of the biggest safety things I will tell you when it comes to couplers. Uh, don't ever take for granted that you've got that thing locked. I've seen way too many close calls and I've heard of way too many guys getting killed in the hole because a bucket drops on them just because the operator took for granted it was locked in. So I hope this has been helpful and answered some of your questions on how to use a bucket in a backwards configuration. Obviously, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments and you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.